everyone. Welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, as you can see now, I've just marked up these areas here, just in case anybody did get the wrong idea. <laughs> OK, they're temporary. Um, but moving on, being a little bit more serious now, obviously you've seen the lift working if you've seen the last video. So what I'm going to start thinking about now is putting the shelf down here where because the neighbours are not in at the moment. So it's probably be a good time to do that, make all the noise. Um, I have started laying track. Uh, that's all glued down now. And a little bit of uh, uh, cork there. Obviously, I've got to go all the way around. Um, but there's quite a lot to do there. That's going to take a little while to get all that done. But I will do it as quickly as I'm able. All right. Anyway, so like I said, I'm going to start putting the uh, shelf down here now. Um, I'm going to put a batten along there. And using the bed frame, put pieces along this part here. Another batten along there behind behind that uh, cabinet unit and start building up and then there'll be some more bracing across the front and I'm literally just going to lay the 12 mil boards on top. Oh, there we are so far. That's not fixed by the way, yeah. But uh, just taking you down just so you can see where things are going. It's all a bit dark there, I've got to refix that light up but just making sure that it all lines up. This bit's going to be the tricky bit because I can't, I've got a rail at the back and a rail at the front, but there's no rail here. So the board would just sag. So I'm gonna to have to build out a frame, probably here and maybe one where that post is as well, uh, just to support the, the board, okay. So I'm going to start building those two frames now and I'll catch you Good shortly. Luck. Not all just been doing the construction of the shelving, but I've actually been laying some track. So I've been doing the construction during the day when I've not been working and then laying track at night time when it's quieter. Because it's a much quieter activity laying the track, obviously, just gluing and sticking down the felt. All right, so anyway, that's... You can see that I've started putting some track onto the lift. Uh, so I'll just show you this. I've just laid that as one continuous piece at the moment. And then once all that's gone off tomorrow, I will cut through with the Dremel, making sure I get a nice clean, clean cut. And obviously I've got to do the same at that end when I get that far. But it's um, it's a tad more difficult to reach the track at that end because I've obviously got to lean over new mills, which is sort of buried under this sheet at the moment. But uh, yeah, so like the only piece of track I need to lay, obviously finish the lift off, and then that section just there because that's paper, and then this bit here and onto the lift. Uh, the riser or the incline which runs along the back there i'm thinking of at the moment just removing that piece of track there because if that's going to be scenic i'm going to have to do something with that surface i can't leave it as that zigzag polystyrene because everything's just going to fall through it uh, so i might have to take that off and even just temporarily just put um, a papier mache surface on the top of that so it's going to be a few, a little while, I should say, just before the upper level is up and running again. Well, in fact, the whole layout, quite frankly. So, I mean, obviously I've got to test it all and make sure everything works. And, um, yeah, one step at a time. All right. Um, incidentally, on the track front down there, still hoping to have a, oops, a big reversing loop coming round here. If I can do it without making it stupid tight, when the lift comes down, I want it to be able to come in one track, you see there's two tracks, one track come in, track all the way round, and that can be third radius curve, all the way round there, and then have points coming off here into a whole load of tracks going down there 
Yeah, so there's going to be at least at least six, seven, eight tracks maybe down that bit there. So obviously got to avoid that the pillar or the the actuator where it comes through the board there. But yeah, I'd like it to be able to come go off the lift and then go back onto the lift onto the other track. And effectively the train is turning around then, isn't it? Even though it's going onto a different track. And then the same at that end, um, where the track all the tracks will come round and go down there. They can, that that section there, once it's been extended down to the bottom, which I'll do tomorrow, that could be really quite wide. I don't know how many tracks I'll get in there, and it's going to take a while for me to put them all in because obviously there's quite a lot of tracks to go down there. Welcome back. Now for you, that's literally just been a few seconds. But for me, that's been about three to four days since the last clip. But you saw that going along there. Now this bit isn't complete yet, but the tracks are in there. And the track, this track goes up to that point there it's not connected just yet and what i've decided to do for a little while uh, because i'm struggling with points to be honest with you um i'm running out of points so i've decided to leave that little bit for the time being i will buffer stop that um, but it will become the loop um, because like i said it's going to be a while before the next phase is done after this but uh anyway that's the upper level now down for the lower level. This is where most of the work has taken place. You can see now we have track. Not all the track by any means and you can see by the weights and the drill being there that it's only just been laid. But it's quite a nice area on the post Mind the post, there it is. You can see it goes around and then loops back. Now that there is a pretty much a kidney shape. You might be thinking, well, how can that be, John? Because you've got the two lines joining up with the lift. Yeah, that is true. But the back line is one side and the front line, this line here, is the front of it along with this one here. They loop off together. If I just take you back, and you can see just there, behind all those wires, which I still need to put up. They will get done at some other point in my life. But also you'll notice there is a point there, because this area eventually all this area here will be populated with track. I'm going to cram it. I'll probably get another four tracks in there. I must admit, I'm, I keep hearing those um, decoders popping. I'm a bit concerned about those those decoders that cause that, that um, uh, short circuit. I might just disconnect them. We'll see, because they keep causing the Z21 to sort of pop and reset. So I might just disconnect that before you see the next bit. Now, a word on this section here. Now that might not look too bad to you on camera, but that, that there, that loop is alarmingly small. Um, and I was a bit concerned about it until I tried pushing, because it's not wide yet, that steam around it and it went round. It didn't seem to have any issues going round at all. And whilst I can't um, run anything yet, nothing's connected, but watch this. This is where it'll all come off there, you see. But it's all coming off now. And that's pushing. No issues at all. 
Now, granted that is pushing the train, that is not with locomotive right on the post. Yeah. So that's pretty much where we are at the moment. So there's as much track down as I'm gonna lay right at this moment. What I wanna do now is get it wired up, uh, basically wired, and then I will fit a few more tracks because I've got, um, like I said, I'm running out of points. Um, I've got three curved points, which are all right hand, and they're not appropriate for what I wanna do. And I've got a Y, and I think it's either a right or a left. I think it's a right, which I could use in that area down there beyond beyond those weights between these two tracks here. So I'm what I'm gonna do, uh, just to give you a bit more of a, well, let me take you around and I'll show you from the other side. Now, this is a view from the room uh, as you first come into the room and that point I was just talking about is just there, okay? So I'm gonna populate all of this with dead end tracks because this will then be filled with trains that are double-ended, i.e. the HSTs, the, the Pendolino, and all those trains that don't need to turn round will run in either direction. So they can come in, stop, and then go out again. No problem at all. So the trains that need to have a need to turn round will obviously be able to do that on these loops, because when you when you get to one side of the track, you will be able to access the same side from the, when it gets above, if that makes some sense. I'll explain that a bit in a minute. So this area here will be populated with maybe four, five tracks even, and those tracks will go around the corner as far as I can get it. So they're gonna be pretty long. So they'll be able to join at one end, either end, and then go out the other end and turn around at the same time, okay? So let me take you around the other side now. So this is the corner I was just referring to, so the tracks will come down here, the other side of the drill, here, okay? Now, looking at that gap in there, I might do well, oh, excuse me. Looking at that gap in there, I might do well to get about three, perhaps four, and they will come off a point which is just there. There, a bit difficult to show you just around the point and obviously with all the weight still there. But I do also want to populate this area here. Not totally sure how, to, how I'm gonna do that yet. I might just take a point off the straight once it hits the straight there and then have another two or three tracks coming off this way. But again, it really doesn't make the slightest jot of difference. I could also take a point off this point, a part here, and have that going into the straights. So there will be a few dead end tracks and those ones in the middle will be for turnaround loops. Okay, I mean, being the fiddle yard as well, I mean, if I do have to swip, switch a locomotive around and put it on the other end, it really doesn't make the slightest jot of difference to me. Um, I, ideally, I don't want to do that if I can really help it because that's defeating the point of the object. But we'll see how it goes. Um, like I said, it would be good to have trains that can come in, turn around and go back out again. OK, that, that's enough for this little bit. And now for the bit you've all been waiting for, the lift in operation. Enjoy.
Well, as the HST is now coming to a stop, I hope you've enjoyed this build and you've enjoyed seeing the ramp working. Obviously, over the next few days, I'm going to be adding an awful lot more tracks. Well, as many as I can anyway, because like I said before, I'm running out of points. So I'll get as many as I can fitted, which will probably only be about three or four, if I'm honest. But we'll take it from there. All right, anyway, I'll see you again soon. Hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, have a good week. Bye for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do like, subscribe and share. Not forgetting to click on that little bell to get regular notifications of any videos I upload. Some other videos are appearing on the screen right now, which also might take your interest. Thanks once again and bye for now.